Hey everybody, how are you doing? I hope you're well and your studies are going smoothly. It's time to revise and I'm going to support you today to do that for research methods. It's paper two, it's going to be features of science. Let's crack on. Alright, so here is an opportunity for you to blurt your features of science, whatever you can remember, scrap bit of paper, whatever you want to do, whiteboard. Pause the video, do that, and then come back and see mine. Okay, right, let's have a look. So this is what I've come up with. You'll have different, maybe, uh, ways of remembering some of this. You might use slightly different language in places, but I tend to talk about force P or forcep or even forceps. Yes, I know I've got a double C in the middle there. You can deal with it, though. So your features of science, you should know most of these. Falsification or falsifiability. This refers to the idea that a hypothesis or a theory can be proven wrong. So what I mean there is, you know, it doesn't create a circular argument. It's something that I could actually set up a study, test it, and prove it wrong. It needs to be testable. Objectivity. So not subjective, not based on opinion or interpretation. Replicability. Well, that's the idea that we need to be able to repeat a procedure or a finding, and that's about checking reliability. You're going to have, you know, ideas about keeping uh, tasks the same if you've got standardized instructions that sort of stuff that's what replicability is about someone else can come along and pick up your study and do it construction of theories this is where a uh, researcher will sort of develop a, uh, a framework of different ideas or different propositions in order to describe explain or predict a behavior yeah so we part of part of science is that we're going to collect some data and we're going to try to use that to explain a behavior so, like uh, Bowlby's maternal deprivation hypothesis, for example, they're trying to explain the effects if a child goes through that experience. Control, this is about like you're controlling extraneous variables or individual differences or whatever, so that we can establish that the IV has caused the DV, for example. Empiricism is the idea that we are collecting evidence, and that needs to sort of be done directly through experiments and observation. You should be familiar with the idea of a paradigm, which is a shared sort of assumption or method or framework or belief in a scientific field. And with that is the idea that a paradigm shift is when those sort of frameworks or assumptions change in a science. So, for example, if there's a sort of technological revolution, maybe, you know, things like when fMRI were invented, all that sort of stuff, then that might shift the focus of psychology. That's what a paradigm shift is about. And lastly, I've put statistical testing on there, or hypothesis testing. It's the idea that we are quantitatively sort of looking for significant differences in order to test our hypotheses. I suppose that links into the idea of falsification, doesn't it? All right, so how did you do? Hopefully you remembered most of those. Add in anything that you didn't get. Time to look at some questions. So here's your chance to pause the video and then give some of those a go. What you can do then is come back and we will review them. All right, over to you. There's your chance to pause it. And let's carry on. All right, so explain paradigm shifts. That's what we talked about a minute ago. Remember that a paradigm is that set of shared assumptions or methods in a field. So a paradigm shift is where there's a change to that. And you could give the example of something like the cognitive revolution in psychology that was sort of 1950s, 1960s, when we moved away from things like behaviorism to focus more on internal mental processing. You could talk about sort of the more recent paradigm shift towards the idea of cognitive neuroscience if you want to. Explain why it's important to replicate research. Well, let's recall the idea of replicability. That's about being able to repeat. So you're going to get some credit there for talking about maybe checking the reliability of studies. You might recall from other bits of research methods the idea of false positives or type 1 errors. You might remember that one of the standard sort of P levels that we use in psychology research is the 5% significance level. And what that effectively means is that every time we do a study or we get our data, there's potentially a 5% risk that it's a false positive. It's a 5% risk that actually we're saying that there is a genuine effect or a finding here when really it was just due to chance. So replication is really important to try and minimize the impact or the risk of those things. If you imagine, you know, 5%, that's one in 20 studies potentially, have or are a false positive. Well, if I then replicate that, I suppose, a bit of crude maths, that's sort of 1 in 20 and then 1 in 20. Maybe there's only a 1 in 400 chance that actually I've got false positives that time. Anyway, I think you get the idea. 
All right, so this time we've got a humanistic psychologist who's doing some sort of diary task, collecting some qualitative data, and they're investigating self-esteem, self-concept, self-image, whatever you want to call it. We're interpreting what the diary says. Okay, so the question is asking you to apply, so let's recall some features. We're applying those features to say why this would be unscientific. So a couple of relevant things potentially here. Maybe there's a lack of falsification, a lack of falsifiability, because it's an unobservable concept. I can't really, you know, see this idea of self-concept or self-esteem. So it makes it very difficult to prove the psychologist's conclusions to be correct or to be false. Objectivity as well. I mean, it does say based on his interpretation. That sounds quite subjective, doesn't it? Maybe there's going to be bias there, so it's not objective. And, you know, it's a diary task, it's qualitative, and it's about that lady's, you know, unique sort of idea of herself and her self-esteem. So is that something that we can replicate? Not really. Everyone's going to maybe process that differently and come up with a different response to that diary task. So I would say it's not replicable. You wouldn't have to do all three of those. A couple would be fine as long as you're linking it to that context. This time we are looking at a significant difference between memory recall in younger and older people. We are giving 50 of each a list of words. It's the same list of words, that's potentially important, and the same time to learn them, again important, and then we're comparing the mean scores. And we're asked for three ways in which this study could be considered scientific. So for six marks, we're using our knowledge of a feature of science and making a link to the STEM each time, yeah? So let's do some recall here. You know your features now. Some options here, maybe it can be falsified because there will either be a significant difference in recall or there won't, so you know we can prove that idea wrong. It's objective, it's just how many words they recall, it's not any sort of interpretation needed from the researcher there to assess their memory skills. It's controlled, we've talked earlier about sort of managing extraneous variables and things like that. The control here, as I emphasised earlier, is the idea that we've got the same list of words for everybody and they've got the same time to learn them, yeah? It wouldn't be very well controlled if I gave them different amounts of time and I just sort of said, oh, you know, look at it until you're happy. Empiricism, we're collecting data, you know, we are collecting the number of words that they recall. Potentially you've got the link with statistical testing there as well because it talks about a significant difference. So any three of those would be fine. You might well link in others, but those are the ones that I thought linked best. Explain how Milgram's work illustrates two or more features of science. So similar here, but you're using your knowledge of Milgram's obedience study, the shock studies. So we want two or more. So potentially two with a bit more explanation or three with a bit less would be fine. Some ideas. Falsification, maybe it's the idea that in his obedience study he was saying that they would either obey or they would not obey or they would go to 450 volts or they wouldn't go. So that's something that could be proven wrong potentially. It's objective, it's just about the scale, the voltage that they went up to. That was the measure of obedience, there's no real sort of interpretation needed there. Replicability, it was sort of controlled lab settings, you know that from studying paper one. Construction of theories, well what did Milgram do with it? His research led him to propose different factors that encouraged obedience, situational factors, things like agentic state and legitimacy of authority. Control, again it's a controlled lab setting, you could talk about the fact that it was the same confederate, it was the same procedure, the same machine, all of this, the same responses, sort of scripted or recorded from the confederate, or the, the learner I should say. And empiricism, he's collecting observational data from these participants, such as the voltage they went to. Okay, discuss features of science in psychology, referring to one or more examples. So breaking this down, it says refer to one or more examples. So this would be space for some application marks here. I would say this is probably three, or well, this will be three plus two plus three. I think I would probably take maybe two or three. Yeah, I think three for three marks makes sense, doesn't it? So whichever ones you like, really. In your application, you're then going to link that in. We've just talked about Milgram. You could pick whatever study you like. In terms of those three discussion marks, maybe what you would do with that is talk about maybe how important or indeed not some of these features are. So you could sort of contrast it with more or less scientific approaches to psychology. And if you're aware of things like the work of Freud, you know, the psychodynamic approach, the humanistic approach, which is much less scientific, then you could sort of contrast it and say, you know what, this isn't the only way to do psychology. It still has value. 
So that brings us to take a minute now to reflect on what happened, your performance, and why did it happen, and really importantly, what do you need to do next? If you're looking for more resources to support your revision outside of videos, then I've got free resources on my website as well as available on Amazon now. I have a psychology word searches book if you're looking for something a bit more lighthearted, and a practice questions and answers book for research methods if you're looking to test your application skills. Okay, that brings us to the end of this session. Thanks very much for listening. I hope it went well for you. Please give the like and subscribe buttons a good smash for me and let me know if you've got any questions in the comments. Have a great day, everybody. See you in another video.